Hey everyone, I'm Rich Tabor and um, I recently joined GoDaddy as the Senior Product Manager of WordPress Experience. Um, my role at GoDaddy is to empower folks to build beautiful WordPress websites in the entirety of the user experience that surrounds there. Um, right now we're focusing a little bit more on the Gutenberg side of things and that's kind of where my last year of development has taken me, so I thought it would be a good idea to dive into the things I've learned along the way um, so that we can collectively build better WordPress experiences. Because realistically, if we're building these awesome, great experiences and WordPress is easier to use and more delightful to use, we're all going to win because then WordPress is going to get more and more popular and easier and easier to use. Uh, so if you'd like to follow along on your phones or tablets or anything, you can go to x.co slash Tabor, and um, the slides will pull up there, and um, they'll switch when I switch as well. You can also catch me on Twitter at Richard underscore Tabor. And afterwards, I'll be right across the hall at the Happiness Bar for additional questions or chats of any sort. Will, will those slides stay up after the... Yeah, I'll get them up there, yeah. All right, so let's get started at looking at user experience from a very wide-angled lens. All right, designing exceptional WordPress experiences has never been more important than it is today because Gutenberg changes the very foundation of how we manipulate content in WordPress. It's known for its, uh, right now WordPress itself is known for its indirect manipulation interface. That's where settings and options are buried within different locations throughout WordPress. You'll notice a few of these. We've got admin pages, widgets, short codes, customizer settings and controls. And within the customizer, there's various panels and various sections of controls in there by itself. Then we have third-party applications where you're signing out of your WordPress site into something else, configuring something, then coming back into your WordPress just to add an empty widget or empty plugin to a page. All of these collectively are making the WordPress experience kind of mediocre and kind of difficult, especially for anyone who's new to WordPress. Gutenberg, on the other hand, introduces a landmark shift in user experience for WordPress. We're basically starting fresh with the editor, and we really have a chance to make some vast improvements in this. For one, the new editor is using a new direct manipulation interface with blocks at the helm. And in the context of Gutenberg, Direct manipulation is an interaction style where we're editing and manipulating each atomic block in, a, in the context of itself. What makes Gutenberg so awesome is that its inherent flexibility, the different core design patterns that we can leverage, and the core components that are built into Gutenberg that when we're building our own Gutenberg experiences, we can leverage to build amazing experiences. Now this makes the editor quite a bit more powerful, like we all can agree. But at the same time, and as a consequence, it makes it a little bit more complex than the classic editor. But in all reality, complexity is not bad. It's difficult and challenging, but it's not bad, you know? It invokes that difficulty and is challenging and engaging. And that's kind of the mark we want to hit. Blocks of any nature should strive to be absolutely reducing the cognitive load of using the editor. Things should be as simple, as seamless, and as cohesive as possible. Because we want to design and build blocks that are inevitably complex by nature, but are not complicated. So how do we do that? We start with the Gutenberg design patterns that are set already in place for us. These patterns are a combination of solutions bundled in a reusable manner for common behavioral, structural, and creational software patterns in an application. Why is this important? We must grasp these principles of these Gutenberg design patterns in their entirety to build remarkable experiences, not blocks. We're trying to engage the user at a very personal level when they're editing their content and build the experience around the block that they're creating and that they're using, not the actual block. Because what matters is how they perceive WordPress in that atomic context of using that custom block. So in essence, 
We're hardly building blocks, we're really building experiences, little micro experiences within each block. So let's dive into the actual block level interface and take a deeper look into Gutenberg as a whole. So at the atomic level, a block itself is the most basic unit of the editor. Everything we are going to interact with within the editor is a block. Paragraphs are now blocks, headings are blocks, images, quotes, pricing tables, every single thing you add within the white space, white space of that page is now a block. With its direct manipulation interface, that block's settings and controls are now controlled within that one atomic interface. So when you select a block, you're going to surface those block's controls and settings. Now what this does is allows for a wide variety of advanced features and advanced controls while also not overpowering the interface and creating a very complicated and complex solution. We want to make sure that things are not complicated, even though they are complex. So there are three main areas where we can add our controls and our settings within our blocks. There's the block toolbar, the block settings sidebar, and then the block content area. We're going to dive into each one of these and starting with the block content area. Now interaction within the block content area is the most intuitive to use and should be thought of as the number one primary interface for adding and manipulating content. This is when you're first looking at a block, like for example in the paragraph block, all you do is type. That's the direct, right there, it's direct, it's in your face and that's exactly what you, all you need to do. If you want to do extra stuff, there are other controls elsewhere. Now there are two main patterns for interacting within a block's content area. That's using placeholders and contextual controls. The first type of pattern is the placeholder. Now the placeholder is content within the content area of the block that can be thought of as a guide or a placeholder or a set of instructions in the interface for the user to follow. Now the requirements here is that it must be thoughtful, it must be entirely relative to the situation that we're in when we're experiencing this block, and it must be short and concise. Let's look at some examples here. This is a masonry gallery block I built into block gallery. Now this gallery block has a placeholder component with directions on how to upload or select media in this gallery. Once you add that media, the placeholder is then replaced with the rendered gallery, closely resembling what we're going to see on the front end. This is just one way of how to use placeholders. Placeholders can take quite a few different forms. For example, this pricing table block here has micro placeholders for the plan, for the dollar sign, for the amount, and each of the features, and even the buttons. Using these instructions, we're creating a pathway for users to create their and fill out their pricing tables. That way, you're not going in and manipulating stuff, taking forever just to try to get somewhere. Yes? Going back to slide to the gallery, mm -hmm. sorry, I didn't see where that was concise and, and the instructions on how to use it. So, um, back and forth, but. So, when, you, when I first, right here, when I first add those images before you see the gallery, all it says is masonry gallery. It might be too hard to read. And it says drag or drag images or upload into this placeholder. So all I'm doing is dragging those images right into it. Okay. So you selected masonry gallery, mm -hmm. and that's an option. To just right, it's just right. a placeholder and there. You drag, and then so on the next one you have the pricing. Is that an option or one that you create in store? What what is that? So each, what we're doing when we type something into these custom blocks is it's saving it as an attribute of that block. So that renders, it basically that's the data structure for each of these blocks. So I'm asking, I, I guess, is this a block that I've created and I can save? Or is this a block that's in there and I can use? This is a block that I've created that's in there for you to use. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, right now it's on the Coblox plugin. Okay. It's within there. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just showing. These are just more advanced ways to do okay. things. I, 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 yeah. I was expecting all the dots. The plugin. The plugin. Yeah, plugin. Yeah. 
Correct. Yes. Oh, got it. I'm there now. Thank yeah. You. I'm just showing how we can use. Yeah. I'm just showcasing how we can use various placeholders in one particular block here. So um, Yes, it does. Uh, right, it should. Yeah, you just install the plugin and it should yeah, be working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Coblox plugin. Not this particular pricing table, no. Yeah. And, I'll, and we'll go through the pricing table and a couple other block case studies at the end here in a live demo. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gotcha. And here's another example. Now this placeholder, is all it's asking for is a gist URL. Once you add your gist URL in there, it's going to start rendering the actual gist. So you can see the pattern here is the placeholder is requesting information. And in this case, we're requesting that URL. As soon as you add that URL and press enter, it's going to actually render what it's supposed to render. And that's kind of the, the pattern here that we're kind of reiterating on over and over. So aside from patterns, we have contextual controls. It's an alternative pattern choice and one of the two common aside from placeholders. And these are logical controls that are based on variables within this one singular block. Now these must be minimal and not disorienting. And I'll show you guys what I mean here. So as you select on this gallery block, we're going to see this new upload an image button show up. Now these controls are rendered based on the fact that we have media already and we need a way to add more or upload more. Otherwise, we'd have to figure, you have to somehow like do something because we're gonna wanna edit our media and in, improve our gallery or switch it up with more stuff. Um, and the important thing I'm doing here is it's a very minimal change. I'm not really disorienting the UI. I'm not switching things up to make it seem much more complicated than it actually is. And the core gallery block does the same exact thing. Yeah. Like with this gallery block. Mm -hmm. Now these images are sized and properly work there. Would we need to plan ahead to and edit our images to where they we know they're going to look good in in that size and that orientation? Um, in this particular gallery, it just it basically is a percentage base. So your images will fit masonry wise in whatever percentage base it's selected at. So if they're different sizes. It's It'll change how tall they are technically. Mm -hmm. Like a very wide image would show super short. Yeah. All right. We would want to plan ahead A little bit, yeah. yeah. So outside of the block content area, we have those other two methods, the toolbar and the settings sidebar. Let's take a look at the toolbar here. Now the toolbar is very interesting because these, this houses controls that are 100% necessary for manipulating your block. These must be contextual as well, fitting within the current UI. You can't add anything that's going to break the current UI model within the toolbar. And they need to be, again, 100% necessary for managing that block. And that's really important. So here's a map block. This is also a block I added within Coblox. At the very top right there, I'm toggling an edit location toolbar control. Now this control is contextual. It only appears if we have an address or a location saved within the map block. Otherwise, we don't need to edit a location if there's not one there. Clicking on that control will reveal the original placeholder UI. It'll flip us back. If you can just imagine us kind of flipping it, where we can edit it, and once we hit apply, it flips it back and we see our map once again. This operation is necessary for managing that block because we want to be able to change our location. Therefore, it's properly placed within the block toolbar up top. So then we have our sidebar settings. Now, while the block toolbar houses these controls that are absolutely necessary for your block, the sidebar settings is where you put all of the advanced functionality that is not necessary for your block. These also must be contextual. It's kind of a theme that we're going on. Everything we do in our blocks needs to have some sort of relative functionality based on something else. So here's that map block, the same exact one. Now we're looking at the setting sidebar on the right here. I have zoom level and a height in pixels level. And as you add an address, the zoom level and now the height 
and pixels options are now available to manipulate in this setting sidebar. Neither of those are absolutely necessary for this block, which is why they're placed within the sidebar. And if you look closely at the map block at the very bottom, there's this little blue nib when you select on the block. That little blue nib shows that this block is also resizable. You can click on that. It's a design pattern within um, all the Gutenberg core blocks. When you click on that, you can drag it. What I'm doing there is using that block content area as the primary interface of this block and putting controls in there that we can leverage so you don't have to go to the settings sidebar. Now all of these UI pieces that I've shown you, including that resizable box with the little handle at the bottom here, the zoom level and the height and pixels, and even the icons within the toolbar up top, all of these are core components provided by WordPress. Now these core components are provided so that we can have a level of consistency across all of our blocks, including and especially including third party blocks. Because a consistent experience is absolutely paramount. Otherwise, we're gonna have this fragmented, some blocks were great, some blocks are terrible kind of system where we almost have now when editing content within the classic editor and all these other different types of page builders. And then you end up doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so these blocks must be 100% familiar. And you know what? If you can make it feel as if it's a core block where you don't have to relearn anything new when you're manipulating this brand new block that you've never seen before, then that's when you're hitting right on the target. Let's take a look at some more core components within Gutenberg. Right now, we're just going to look at the paragraph block. Within the paragraph block, we have the font size, drop cap and color settings options within the settings sidebar here. The font size component is called the font size picker. And this is built into core where you can also customize the, uh, the actual number if you want to do like an advanced type uh, sizing. And you can reset it back to the default or pick one of the theme specified um, small, normal, large, or huge. You can also use the toggle component built into core to add a drop cap option or whatever you're doing. And what's neat about that is we have the help, te help text underneath the drop cap, which right now says toggle to show a large initial letter. As we toggle that, we can switch it to be contextual, where it will say showing a large letter or initial letter. So that way we can actually do um, really contextual help guides to help people understand what's happening. Yes? How, how do you indent a paragraph? Um, yeah, I don't know if you can right now. Besides maybe tab or pair or spaces, yeah, maybe spaces then right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, using these components, we could extend the paragraph block and add a tab or had a toggle to indent this paragraph. We could do that relatively easy, and it would look just like the drop cap toggle right underneath it. That's something I, we could think about doing. Then we have the color settings panel at the bottom, or it's called panel color settings is the official term for this panel down here. And this will pull in any of the theme colors that the theme has specified for the color palette. And it's pretty, it's pretty interesting because we can basically tie into the system and apply colors from whatever, whatever we want to do within our blocks. As long as we're following the same exact pattern by having it within the color settings panel and then having it trigger the colors on the left, then we're good. All right. So now let's do some demo time. Do you have any other questions while I pull up the demo? So what's the difference from components? Who's available? How can we find out the list of the available? Yeah, so on the core GitHub repository on WordPress, or on um, WordPress's GitHub repository, there's all, like you could find all of the entirety of the components there, and there are a crazy number, like maybe 50 to 100, and even more so after that. Like they're always continuously adding more and more of these components that we can reuse. How do you actually find them? Mm -hmm. Because when I go into my little Gutenberg thing, it only gives me the most commonly used blocks, mm -hmm. and, and there's only like a dozen. Like the token as end users. Okay, yeah. as end users here, I'll show you. Let me pull up the demo here. Um. 
it's an attempt to make building pages better in core WordPress. Page Yeah, uh, um, I mean, I think that there will be a need for a little while, um, maybe a little bit longer, um, because they're serving almost a different market. They're going for the building these really crazy websites and, and beautiful pages and stuff, but it is much more complex than, um, than it should be for everyday people just trying to make a really awesome website on their own. And I think so this is trying to push that, where we're just trying to empower people to build these websites using as simple as tools as possible by following all of these patterns and all these core components that they're laid out for us. In Genesis, I think you can, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So, where are we at here? Okay. Now, this is a little tight, it looks like. <laughs> but we're going to showcase a little bit of stuff here. Let's go into, first we're going to do what's the shape divider. This block is pretty neat. Um, this right here is the, um, the block content area. And remember, this is the primary area for when we're editing and manipulating our content, which is why I built this resizable bar right here, where we can resize the height of this divider, and also the space between the content and the divider itself. The idea would be you could add another container down here that would have the same background color and make this like really cool wave effect within your uh, media. Now this right here is a, co a color picker and this is also a component built into Gutenberg that I leveraged. And in the spirit of bringing the stuff out of the sidebar and out of the toolbars and into the primary interface, I added it right here so we can just manipulate this color. So let's do some, something cool. This is something that I built to demonstrate the different components and how we can leverage them. Yes. Is it something that I can Yes, you could use this. No. We could do this? You could use this, yeah. 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 We can use yours. Yes. And and you know, if um, you know, if we're designing and building our own blocks, we could leverage these same components in the same style to try to to create uniform experiences all around. Uh, what's neat about this block in particular, let me close out here, is when we go to, let's say, a phone view here and resize things, let's say, because we're going to want a smaller divide on phone, and then we go back up to the larger view, the viewport actually changes what we've done based on the <coughs> switches and the sizes here. So that way, when you're manipulating this content on the smaller screen, it looks the way it's supposed to look like on a smaller screen. Mm -hmm. So that and that took a lot of a lot of effort. And over here, you'll see the actual controls for this. Now we have these different. Um, like right now, I, I just switched it earlier in the UI. But over here, we can do the same thing for tablet, uh, desktop, and also d um, mobile views. We could also flip it if we wanted to put this one on the bottom, or if we just liked it uh, on the X or Y axis. All these are also available in the toolbar because these are pretty important, I think. Okay, and then another cool thing about uh, Gutenberg is that we have this new styles type components where we can leverage what Gutenberg has added to build these really neat styles that you can flip to on the fly. Is this for pages and posts? Mm -hmm. It's for anything that runs Gutenberg. Yeah, and custom post types can even opt in to using these as well. All right. So then let's go into the map block. So here we have the placeholder element. And this is the initial state of the map block. We don't, we don't have an address or anything. There we have no custom things up here in the toolbar besides what core adds there for us. And let's type in uh, so Eiffel Tower. So now we have the edit location control up here where we can swap back here and change it if we wanted to. And we have the resizable box component wrapped around this entire map block so we can resize how tall we want this. Core adds these two right here, which are wide and full alignment. And if your theme supports this, you can go in and toggle those on and build this really cool map. So the map block is, is very interesting 
because I actually built two different uh, plugins or two different blocks into one essentially because right now it's, a, it's an iframe and at GoDaddy we're really trying to make things simple and as easy as possible so this is the best solution if you're just going to put your business map on your about page but if you wanted to go a step further you can go into the advanced settings here plug in your Google Maps API key and things kind of look the same over here just a little bit different but now we have this new style selector where we can set the style of this map in our advanced settings, we can still do our zoom level. Let's set it to 18 here. We can set the marker size if we want it bigger. Now we have these also, these are all contextual. We have all these map controls. We can turn off uh, the street view right here, or let's turn off the zoom controls. If you want to turn them all off, right there is what you toggle. And now that entire panel is missing because we don't need it anymore. If all of your controls are off, we don't need all those individual options. And you can also select the styles from in here. And this looks very similar to that shape divider styles that we created. So this is basically leveraging a bunch of these different patterns all in the same manner in order to build this really neat experience when using this block. Does anyone have any questions about this block in particular? Yes? It's a little bit advanced, uh, but the uh, uh, Google API key, mm -hmm. where is it stored? Is it stored with that house? stored in the options? In the options, yeah. Because if, which is neat, because if you add it once, it'll always be added on any of your other map blocks now. Yeah, and it's not in the content. So Correct. Um, yep, and it defaults to that advanced form, or the advanced block here. And this, this one isn't released yet, this advanced version. Right now it's only this version, and, but we have the iframe version coming out soon. Can you show us the website, the actual website? Mm-hmm. Right now, the uh, plugin is on WordPress.org. So if, if we're in WordPress, can we go to plugins and download it? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's right here. Okay. Is it right here? There's a cool video um, that showcases a bunch of stuff. And there's a bunch of new plugins in there. Let's go into, let's see how much time do we have. Oh, we have sweet. All right, now this block is a little tight on the screen. And you can almost not see it, but right here we have a massive placeholder component. Now this placeholder component is essentially replicating what I'm going to eventually put there, an image. So let's go into this folder right here and let's drop in an image. Now we have our image right here. On the left we have these controls up top here where we can manipulate the background. We can edit the image that we just uploaded. It says edit media because you can also add videos in here. And then you can swap this left and right if you'd like. Now for advanced options, over here on the right, this is a control that uh, we built. Basically, the idea that I like to do, and the same thing that I've explained with the map block, is to make like a very simple way to do something and then an advanced way for the folks who want something more advanced. So for let's add a background color so we can see this here. Added a background color here. Now we have different variations of padding that we can apply here and just the same way that font sizes and colors work a theme can override and set their own paddings here um, and even margins for the same control that does margin but if you want something more advanced per se you can go in here now you can tweak things really detailed or you can unsync things and say you want to add 100 at the top but only in desktop but on tablet you want it to be 50. And you can kind of go in, you can s switch it to M's or even percentages. Or if you're like, I don't know, I just broke everything, you can hit reset and it goes back. <laughs> then we have this alt text, which is a text area component built into core as well. And this is very contextual. It only shows up if we have an image applied here. And we have card shadow and image shadow. Let's turn on the image shadow. We can't really see it. All right. Another neat thing that I, I did here, which um, kind of shows like the next level of the experience, is when you add a background color here, if your padding is set to none, it'll automatically set it to medium. The idea here is that you probably won't want this look here where it's like pressed up against the edge. So I'm trying to eliminate the issues where you try to do something and it doesn't look the way you want it to look. And that's, you just have to be very thoughtful and, and try to 
play around enough until you break it to where you can eventually fix all the broken pieces here. And that's the media card block. And now let's look at the features block. I'll make this one wide too. So this one's really unique um, in the fact that all of these individual pieces here, this icon for example, this heading, and this paragraph here are all actually blocks in themselves. I built one wrapper block here, and then I built a block for each of these feature containers, and then three blocks inside of them. If we look here and select the features block, we can see exactly how that's laid out. And I did this because when, when other developers and when Core improves the heading block, for example, I don't have to do anything to also have those same improvements in the features block, because I'm just adapting and bringing those other pieces into this block. So when you're building blocks, it's really important to try to leverage this as much as possible. Um, for example, the heading block, I added this ability to change the typography. So let's change this to Playfair Display. And we'll change this one too. If I had used its own component and used my own attributes and not used the heading block, then I wouldn't have been able to do that unless I added that entire, all that functionality that goes into changing the fonts into this one particular block. And even then, it wouldn't be as reusable as it is now. We can also change the heading sizes now. And in advanced here, you also have five and six. Now, these icon blocks are really interesting. Uh, because this is all another custom block I built, but all of this here resembles the exact same patterns I've already been doing with the simple and then the advanced. The simple gives you a couple size options here. And if you click advanced, you can also now resize it in detail. A neat little touch here is if you're using the block content area to directly manipulate this icon, it'll automatically switch to the advanced size over here. So again, that's just being very thoughtful of, of what's happening. So when they go to the settings, it doesn't say small and you have a random size that you decided to be and you wouldn't know how to apply that same size to the next icon. We also built this search component here to search for icons. And this is leveraging various components within Core, uh, using the search field, using each of these icons to pull in um, different icons. So we can click globe, we can search for security, we can resize it like we'd like. Um, let's go, if we decide that we want to do a music note and we want it to be a field icon, this is using the same styles components that Gutenberg provides. And now all of these icons are the filled versions of themselves. Now once you have an icon here and you like it and decide to change its color, you can tweak it here. You can set its own custom color. Again, this is using the same exact color palette that we used in the shape divider. And it's within the color settings panel. It's all the same. You can add a background color, which automatically added a padding to this. And then if we go up here, now we have these new contextual options to tweak this icon's background now that we have the, the background color assigned to it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be necessary to change the radius of this icon. <laughs> So that kind of showcases a bunch of different uh, UX principles and patterns and all the different core components that go into building block experiences. And then going a step further and thinking about finding ways to make sure that when you do something, it doesn't break and that it doesn't give you this like, oh, what did I do? Like reset everything kind of idea. Um, so there's that. <laughs> Are there any questions? Yeah. What's your favorite? Uh, the one I built, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, Coblox. Mm -hmm. It's on uh, the WordPress.org uh, slash plugins slash Coblox. So, all your gestures is already available here. Exactly, yep. Yes? Uh, I'm assuming uh, you use React to build the blocks, is that correct? Correct, yes. Can you still use other JavaScript frameworks? I know they were saying. Initially, you're just vanilla. Or uh, you can, but it's um, you would, it's almost better to go ahead and try learning because it's just all the resources are now in React, and it's just it'd be much more difficult, kind of backtracking. Have you tried Have you tried ACF? 
at all? Or uh, a little bit with their block builder. How was your experience with that? Um, I'm, I've kind of, you know, experience-wise, it's when the solution is not as clear and clever and as precise as what you can build when you're understanding the patterns and building within these principles. But to get started quickly, it works really relatively well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes? So if you're using a thing like Divi, how do you, can you or is it advisable to use uh, Gutenberg inside of Divi? Uh, probably not advisable. Because Gutenberg, what Divi does is it kind of wraps its own layer on top of things. So if you use Gutenberg, it's not going to use what you have in Divi. It's kind of, they're almost, it's one or the other, pretty much. Same with Beaver Builder, and the same with Elementor. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm not super, super familiar, but. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, you did ask me that, yeah. <laughs> Um, she asked if uh, about G the Genesis question. If she had asked it already, <laughs> if you if you could use Gutenberg with Genesis, and you can, yes. So, like with other page builders or other things that do, I know they're a little different. This is a little newer, but mm -hmm. uh, it's just ideal to find a, a thing that works well with that specific one, and then go from there. Well, if you find a thing that works great with Gutenberg, it should work should great work with, with these other plugins. This one's in yeah, right. Plugin. Exactly. Because if because when we're building these plugins, so now that this is a thing, is it, uh, pretty much all the page builders are going to probably go through this sort of thing. I mean, do you think that'll become like the other ones will change the way they do? Uh, I mean, I think in the long tail, they might adapt to be more Gutenberg friendly. Because this seems um, more like it'll be more intuitive, a little bit better. A little bit it better. could be, yes. Yeah, it could be. As long as everyone follows these patterns and uses these components. And, and we have this, I mean, we have this chance to really push WordPress in a new direction of usability. Yes. Uh, was there a question? Yes. I didn't quite know how to phrase this. Um, I haven't used Gutenberg before, and I usually get uh, designers who want us to force themes and things to do things they are never meant to do, so we have to get into custom code. So how customizable are some of the blocks that have been provided. For instance, if we had um, an icon and the designer wanted it to have a CSS animation on it, mm -hmm. we have to get into React style components. We have to build our own block and throw this one out, or can we build stuff onto it that wasn't already packaged with it? Yes, you can extend other blocks. Um, and, and like Coblox makes a few of its functionalities extendable for other blocks to inherit as well. So you can, you can kind of play off of that. And then you can also, if we go in here into the advanced panel here, you can add classes and then target them if you're going to do anything special. Yeah. And you can add multiple classes here. Yes, yes, yes. So you can tell I'm new to WordPress. <laughs> can I open up WordPress, about the domain, can I open up WordPress and build a website just using Gutenberg? I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, well, every, you always need a theme, at least for the next foreseeable future. Um, I think things are changing. What is a theme is going to be very different in a couple of years. But your theme will depict what your website looks like to an extent. You just go and pick a, a theme. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. It comes installed with the theme. It does come with a theme, correct? It comes with the theme. So if you wanted to make have a plain vanilla theme, just play around with Gutenberg, mm -hmm. what would you use, 2019? I would, yes. Just your most vanilla theme yes, and this is 2019 here, and everything, or most of what we do here, will look just the same on the front end, because they've gone into really detail to make sure that. Otherwise, Gutenberg looks very simple, and like a, almost like a Word document, and not as dynamic and as clean. 2019 is the name of the theme? Correct, yes. They come out with a new one every year, so. Yeah. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.